Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Um, so we're actually going to be covering anointing today, specifically what it says in the New Testament and kind of addressing how it's often thrown around in Christian culture. So I thought a good place for us to start is actually kind of a funny story. I think a reflection a bit of what it looks like today. So I was attending a church. I was attending as a friend of another person who brought me. So it was their church and they wanted me to attend this church. So they brought me there and uh, I listened to some of the preaching. Some of it was really led by the spirit and some of it was all over the place like uh, preaching a lot of false stuff so it was clear there was a lack of discernment in the space but again I was there with my friend so I was I had not said anything to her about it at this point I did later and I remember the pastor approaching me and he came up to me and he looked me in the eye and he's like you are anointed by God. And I remember like smiling, being like, I didn't say it, but what I wanted to say is we're all anointed by God when you are a believer in Christ. So I held my tongue in that moment, but I'm not going to hold it now, which is to say that if you are a spirit-filled believer, you are anointed. <laughs> and I know sometimes that is not how we like to use the term. We like it to seem like there is this like superpower <laughs> that some of us get that others don't like. It's like God's like special blessing for his favorites. And fortunately for us, the Lord is impartial. He shows no favoritism to no man. And the reference of anointing in the Old Testament is not the way it's used in the New Testament. So we can see some variations on how it's used now. So let's look at some scriptures in which they talk about anointing. I'm going to start with 1 John 2, 20. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. So you're going to see woven through the text that typically when they're talking about anointed anointing, besides a few exceptions, what they're actually referring to is the Holy Spirit or Jesus. <laughs> so I don't, I hate to burst your bubble, but it has nothing to do again with these, what it used to mean a bit in the Old Testament. Okay. First John 2, 27, but the anointing you have received from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Holy Spirit. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Jesus. Okay, I'm going to go to now a different reference. James 5.14. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So what is the function of anointing in this time? Through prayer. So it's not about the person being anointed. It's using anointing oil. Um, and if you guys recall, before Jesus went to the cross, there is the scripture about the woman who uses, again, oil uh, with the intention to anoint his feet. So consistently, we kind of see this played out within the New Testament. Jesus, Holy Spirit, oil that's used. For particular functions. <laughs> so there is actually no reference point to what they're typically referencing it as. Let's see. Mark 6, 13. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. 2 Corinthians 1, 21. 
and it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. Holy Spirit. Now, the intention is not to be smart or smug in any of this. It's just, it's really amusing how, in some cases, this is the culture that we're trying to establish in the Christian kingdom, is we are trying to establish hierarchies. And um, you know what? It actually reminds me. Okay, so Matthew 20, 25 to 28. But Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever must be first among you must be your slave. Even as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So when you hear people using scriptures from the Old Testament, referencing anointing and to some degree trying to maybe elevate their spirituality, I would encourage you to go back to this scripture and to remind yourself that if you would like to be great in the kingdom of God, then you can be a servant. You can be a slave to Christ. And that's how you get to be great in the kingdom of God. And it's not about exalting yourself, but he actually says, humble yourself and he will exalt you in due time. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, night, wherever you are. Bye.